Hey, Brian. What? How come every single time I come in the kitchen, you in the kitchen, eating up all the popcorn, <laughs> pouring away all the beer I give you? Man, I wish I had some popcorn right now. Drinking all the soda pop. I like soda pop. I'll drink those beers. I'll definitely eat that popcorn. And hey, what the hell are you doing with that? Better put some water on that damn shit, Brian. And you're going to eat that shit up. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Epic Film Guys podcast. I am Justin, and I am joined this evening by not Nick. No, not the salty, lovable Nick that you all enjoy listening to on a weekly basis. I am, but the salty, lovable loy sauce. Yeah, or loy choss or loy A1 steak sauce, whatever you want to call him. He's <laughs> sweet. He's savory. He goes down smooth. <laughs> uh, just don't let him sit around in your mouth for too long. He may sting. But yeah, we're here. We're going to give you a new episode. Nick is not here this week. He's taking a little bit of a break. He's doing something special. I think he may be eating a steak himself at a gourmet restaurant in Binghamton, if that Restaurant. is a thing. He's doing something. I know that he said that he has something more important to do than talk to us schmucks. So it's us. We're, you're rolling with the Loy Choss and me for this week's episode. And we're going to have a good time with you guys. We have a tin can filled to the brim full of great tuna fish for you to eat this week. So, uh, yeah, that was a horrible analogy. God damn it, Nick, make sure you cut that out of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I for one, think it was perfect. Perfect. Now you're adding the cat stuff in there. Yeah, so. Meow. What's up, Loy Sauce? How you doing, man? I'm doing very well, Justin. How are you? I am fantastic. We just got done doing our patron-only segment. We talked about something super special to our patrons, but we can't leave out our regular listeners, even though it only costs like a fucking dollar to be a patron of the Epic Film Guys podcast. So if you're not yet, you like the show, or if this is the first time you've heard the show and you're like, hey, these guys sound okay, I'll give them a dollar a month. Go ahead, become a patron of the show and you get extra stuff every single week from us just for being a patron. So thanks to those that are patrons already and uh, we're welcoming more to the group. But we did do something over the weekend, something awesome. We talked about it in our patrons-only section. Brian, what happened over the weekend at Alamo Drafthouse, D.C. area? Well, as our listeners know, I am the creative manager at the Alamo Drafthouse, no, D.C. area. really? I am. I am. And uh, I arranged to have Greg Sestero, the co-star and line producer of The Room, uh, co-writer of The Disaster Artist, My Life Inside the Room, which has been adapted into a Academy Award-nominated film. But his name is Mr. Greg Sestero. I invited him to come join us at the Alamo Draft House for an event entitled A Night Inside the Room, where uh, he offered some behind-the-scenes tidbits on the making of the room and also provided the audience with a surprise, I guess you could say. It certainly was, Brian. I was outright shocked. I stood up and clapped in front of everybody. I was not at all embarrassed whatsoever. I was super excited. We got to see a full screening, like the full movie, an advanced screening of Best Friends, which stars Greg Sestero and Tommy Wiseau. And, Co-written uh, by, uh, actually, no, written by Greg yeah, Sestero Greg, Yeah, Greg wrote it. And uh, we had a great time hanging out with Greg. I like to pretend that we're cool guys, but we're not really cool guys, except for, well, you, Loy Sauce, you're the self-proclaimed god of podcasting. So I think you- It's true. Yeah. I think you have a right to call yourself cool, but we were hanging out with Greg. He told us all about it, and um, we kind of talked a little bit about it in our patron-only segment, but we can't fully review it yet. We have heard right out of Greg's mouth, please don't review it yet. It's not totally- finished but you can kind of give an advanced like an initial reaction on it i'm going to say this much and i'll leave it at that i loved it i thought it was fantastic and if you ever doubted that tommy Wiseau could give a great performance you will be proven wrong <laughs> when you watch this movie that's absolutely right i won't say too much about the movie itself what i will say is i will never forget the moment that the audience reacted to the announcement. So what happened was uh, Greg came out 
because we he showed the teaser trailer to best friends during his presentation and after the trailer he came out and said you know would you all like to see that and you know people applauded he's like do you want to watch it right now and i just couldn't even believe i watched your reaction because i was i was you know observing the audience at that point and uh I, I, you, <laughs> your reaction was so priceless the way you like your your you just perked up and your eyes were just wide like a little kid and it was it was the greatest experience it was one of the coolest things and greg said that moment was one of the one of the most memorable of 15 years of touring so that moment was very special for me and it was special yeah, for me it, too man i mean and i wasn't even drunk <laughs> i mean i was getting on my way there but you were yeah the, the reality was is that was the movie that i wanted to see and you guys were supposed to show the disaster artist which we had already seen we talked about it in the show we all really enjoyed it I had felt like if it wasn't going to be the room, I may not stay the whole time. I really just wanted to see like the whole uh, pre-show thing with with Greg, um, where he does live readings from the script of the room and brings down people from the crowd to actually read with him when he's reading his Greg. Uh, he's he's Which, reading his Mark. Um, it's not the it's not the shooting script. It was the, the original, original script, that's script right. yeah. that that Tommy wrote. Which, if you can believe it, is even more incomprehensible than what actually ended up on screen. Oh, hi, Mark. Yeah, and it's fantastic, actually. And uh, we could talk forever about our time this past weekend. But I get I got to tell you, it was one of my favorite times at the Alamo Draft House, man. And and hanging out with Greg Sestero, such a nice, down to earth, chill guy. We may have a special treat for you guys coming in the near future, including Greg Sestero. He does have some epic film guys podcast stickers in his pocket as we speak hopefully he didn't throw them out um, but we did have some talks he's definitely interested in talking about best friends with the epic film guys so we'll see what happens coolest guy ever down to earth guy one of the best looking dudes in the entire world and i don't feel bad saying so awesome time, dude. no i'm not i'm not the lisp i have i have no connection to the lisp that that person, that entity will never come back to the Epic Film Guys. I lied a few weeks ago when I thought he could come back. Nick was making stuff up to kind of coax me into saying so. It's not happening. Not true. End of story. End of story. The hopester, I don't know, because he's still lurking around dumpsters and getting hammered. And he, I saw him just the other night. So You did? Yeah, we went to McDonald's again. Are you fucking kidding me? At like two in the morning. <laughs> now this this happened after the the Greg event. It it certainly did. It certainly I, did. I need some details on this because I was not present during this. Well, he well, guess what he ordered first of all. Uh, I'm sure he ordered at least one double cheese. You would be correct, and uh, something a little bit more shocking than that. He actually paid for my meal. I bought him some uh, some PBR uh, the other week, so I think he, you know, he felt like he owed me, which you know I I didn't think was possible for the hopester to think he owed anyone anything, because he's always he's been begging his whole life. But I'm sure if I was there, he wouldn't have paid for anything for me, because he hasn't ever paid for anything for me. So I think he likes you. I think he's taken with you, and um, he'll continue this trend. Maybe he'll be your sugar daddy. Uh, maybe he'll be giving you like <laughs> he'll find some dead roaches and put them in a bag for you to eat. Maybe as a oh, snack at the movies. I, I don't know. How sweet. How sweet. But moving on from that, there's some movie news that has hit today. Brian, there's something that you were just posted to the page earlier on today that you're super excited about. Which is what? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Call this out, Nick. Fuck off. Justin. We don't, <laughs> I don't know, know, we, what, we don't know what to, to do without you. Well, you posted it to the page, you dick. Oh, the Aretha Franklin thing. The Queen of Soul herself has has handpicked the actress who is going to play her in an upcoming biopic, and it is Jennifer Hudson, who, of course, is an Academy Award and Grammy-winning actress and singer. And this is from the producer of Straight Outta Compton, which, you know, that Ooh. that talent alone is enough to get me excited for it because I love Jennifer Hudson. I I think she gives an incredible performance in Dreamgirls, uh, entirely deserving of her Best Supporting Actress win. Yeah, I, I, I can't wait for this project for sure. I don't know what when the movie's coming out or what it's going to be called Do you know or who's anything, directing it? I don't think there's a director picked oh, up Oh, okay. So at this point, Franklin has just chosen Jennifer Hudson to play her in the film, and that's where we're at at this point. Yes. Well, then. I can't say it's anything that like immediately sparked my interest. I mean, Franklin is a legend 
in the form of music. Nothing that immediately jumped out to me. I'm still waiting on getting my MJ biopic. I don't want to be like 80 years old by the time I get that. Like, let's do it now. Get Bruno Mars to play him. We know he looks the part. Early MJ, at least. They're going to have to like paint him white for the later years and you know give him some prosthetics. But hey, maybe that movie can win Best Makeup Effects that year at the Oscars. I mean, for real, dude. Maybe. Can he act, though? I don't know. But uh, MJ sure could. I tell you that much. You ever yes. see The Wiz? Oh, yeah. I, I have seen The Wiz. But Brian... Also, also Moonwalker. Moonwalker is awesome. And, you know, there was that thing that at Epcot Center, I think you're a little bit too young for it. Captain EO, right? Captain Nemo, right? Wasn't it? Captain no, EO? Captain EO, I think. Captain EO. Are you sure? Captain Nemo is from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. It was Captain EO. Oh my God, you're totally right. And I saw this and you didn't even see it. And I don't even, I'm, I'm totally wrong about this. The poster is the most epic thing in the world. Yeah, I'm going to post I, this to the I, page I, after we get done recording this episode. We are here to change the world. Oh, my God. We've talked about it on the show, I remember, like a year ago or something, because it was like supposed to be like the Star Wars of music videos. Cool shit ever. I saw it at I remember Epcot seeing Center. it. You saw it yeah, at Epcot too. Center? You saw I, it? I was, a, I was a wee little baby boy, but yes. Well, then. That is awesome crazy because i thought you were like way too young for that like i think i saw it like around the, the year that you were born actually i think i saw it when i um when i was like three or something like i was really young but i remember like being there and i remember i don't remember anything necessarily about it but i was a tiny child <laughs> just are you not still a tiny child uh i'm i'm actually a full-grown adult i'm 24 years old so are you now? Uh, I, yeah. I mean, that makes I me, think. that makes me feel better <laughs> that I don't, you know, feed booze to a young man, the young, young, young child, man thing, man you person. For, you force that booze down my throat is what you do. Or I'd be like in the news, epic film, Justin person, podcast person that no one knows or gives a shit about has been feeding booze to a young man. And uh, taking advantage of making him watch bad movies. Yeah, it'd, it'd be a thing. I don't know. Enough blabbing for me, though, Brian, because you know what? We're a podcast that loves movies, but we also love beer. And we do this little thing on the show that we like to call. What are you drinking? I'm back. Puke and rally. Yeah. Woo! Oh, give me a beer. Get me a beer, Brian. All right. So I'm going to throw it to you. Because we know you're drinking like the most delicious, decadent, thick, alcohol-fueled beer that you could find at the store. What do you got guzzling down your gullet this evening, sir? Stella Artois. Wait a minute. You knew what we were talking about in the show tonight, didn't you? Did, did you plan? Did you do a list tonight? Did you? Did you like actually... Listen to my text earlier? Or? Yeah, I mean, I did, but I don't know what that has to do with me drinking a Stella Artois. Because we're going to be talking about some pretty heavy shit in a little bit, guys. All right? Well, you know, this is my first one. I might have a second one. I might have a third one. So, you know. So boost up I, the alcohol content that's absent <laughs> from the first one just by drinking double, triple. I get it. Okay. Totally, dude. I mean, that's what you got to do when you have a light beer. And that's all you have in your fridge. Yeah. I mean, I come all the way over here, and all you got for me is a light beer. Say hi to your yep. mom for me. Ooh, what are you? What do you? What do you have dripping down your esophagus? Ooh, that's a new one. I like that one. You know what, Brian? <laughs> we are talking about some pure badassery. Something that Nick would never allow on the show if he was on the show. He's gonna hate me for that. I'll probably cut that out. But I love you, Nick. I am drinking Adroit Theory's The Death of Civilization in Slow Motion. Uh, this is an Imperial double IPA. If you listen to the show every week, you know this is basically what I drink all the time. And you can make fun of me for drinking the same kind of beer every week. And I'll I'll I'll, I'll take that. That's fine. Um, this baby is 8.3% alcohol by volume and 27 IBUs. And I've really been enjoying Adroit Theory's New England series uh, that they've been doing on and off. I grab them whenever I get the chance. They do these amazing labels, dude. The most sick 
brutal artwork on these things. They're just badass. Best labels I've ever seen, especially if you're a metal fan. I talked about them on the show a long time ago. Whenever I get one of their beers, I, I get a chance. Uh, I drink it on the show. And I did attempt to make them a sponsor of the show by tagging them and everything on Instagram. But it, it didn't take, so they don't give a fuck. But great beer. Delicious. It tastes a lot lighter uh, for a double IPA, actually. It doesn't have, like, that thickness to it. So it's strange, but I really enjoy the hell out of it. It's very good beer, and I would recommend it. But you know what, Brian? We've got a full show ahead of us here. We've got a lot of tuna packed into this can this evening, and y'all are going <laughs> to eat that shit. It may smell a little bit, just just so you know. I mean, it may not smell good, but you'll you'll enjoy eating it, I promise you. I'm sure you've all been in that situation before where you've been in front of something that smelled a certain way, but you still ate it anyways, just for pleasure's sake. So what we're going to be doing for our actual full segment on the show is we're going to be counting down our top 10 Arnold Schwarzenegger films. That's right. Something that Nick would never allow. So I, I like a bad child. When my parents aren't around, I take advantage of it and I misbehave and I do whatever I want. So that's what we're doing. Boy Sauce, you ready for this? I am so ready. So we're going to take a quick little break. And when we come back, top 10 Arnold. This week in epic film history. I picked three sets of actors to play myself and Justin in an epic film guys movie, depending on a couple different factors. So this is like a back in the day, like a 60s, 70s comedy setting. I picked the great, great comedy duo of Zero Mustel as myself and Gene Wilder as Justin. How fucking awesome would that wow. be as a comedy? That would be great. And now, if we made it as a comedy nowadays, okay, I, I picked Josh Gad as myself. Uh, that's like the nerdy guy from uh, The Wedding Ringer. And I picked, Justin's going to love this, I picked Chris Pratt as Justin. <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm honestly, I've almost got tears running down my here we go. Oh, here we go. That is a here compliment right there. No, wait. And if, if, if we were casting this as an Oscar bait style drama, okay, Philip Seymour Hoffman as Nick and Michael Fassbender as Justin. Wow. That's that's what I got. Whoa. Yeah. I have I I'm being honest here. Play the emotional music in the background. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. The fact that I just saw Michael Fassbender in my head and then myself included in that, I have a tear running down my cheek. I'm not even kidding. I'm dead serious. I'm gonna take a picture of it. I'm gonna send it to the page so you can see it. Listen, he's full of shit, ladies and gentlemen, because back when he lived up here and we hung out all the time and we would go to the movies and then we'd get out of the movies and we'd go over to Friday's for a nightcap. We'd have a few beers. We already had pregame before the movie and even that one time we snuck a beer into Amazing Spider-Man. But hey, you know, it, it, he's full of shit because we'd get out of there and the bar would be closed and he'd be like, I want to go to McDonald's and have a double cheese. That's where this whole Hobster thing came from. That's you not think... true. That's a lie. I tell you, that's a lie. It's not <laughs> even true at all. You're making you that's think a it slander. Was this, this thing he made up for the podcast, but no, this is, this is, the Hobster was born out of Justin's love of McDonald's. And I think, I really think, ladies and gentlemen, I'm bearing my soul here on the podcast. I think the Hobster is Justin's manifestation, the physical manifestation of his love for McDonald's. And because Justin deprives himself because he's so health conscious, all this coconut oil and shit. Like, you can't have that kind of thing. So that it's like an alternate personality that's like split off of him. Ha, huh, split, another film you saw. It's just, you know, that's the way it is. And the Hobster wants his greasy, shitty, artery-clogging food. I will say that Patrick S Swayze was absolute shit in Ghost. And he was even worse in Dirty Dancing, which is by far one of the worst movies I have ever seen in my fucking life. Ooh. And the... Justin defends these movies because he has this big heart on for Swayze, almost as big as his gosling heart on. And no, Patrick Swayze has as much talent as a fucking stick of wood. Red Dawn. Red Dawn. Red Shut Dawn. The fuck yes. up. Red Dawn. Yes. He's so full of shit. He is so he is so wooden. He would give Jai Courtney a run for his money in the plane. Yeah, like, right. I'm division. gonna come I'm gonna come through this mic headset and I'm gonna stab you right in the he neck. I'm terrible. gonna kill you. <laughs> I, I swear to God. I can't I'm gonna kick your thing. ass Dalton style in Roadhouse and all of a sudden <laughs> spin kick to the head to the bar. Bam! Beer glass. I to can't the skull. pick a single film. 
Y'all ready for this? We're about to count down our top 10 Arnold films. And I couldn't do this alone. I wish I could, actually. I would probably sit around and do this alone on my own time. But no, Nick is gone this week, and I am joined by Lloyd, Lloyd Choss, Lloyd won A1 Steak Sauce. Oh, he tastes so good in your mouth. But he melts in your mouth, not in your hand. That's right. Don't forget. He's going to be counting these movies down with me. We're going to have a great time. We hope you can have fun with us while we do so. I'm going to throw it on over to you, Brian, for your number 10 best Arnold Schwarzenegger flick. What do you got? Uh, My number 10 is a film from 1977 called Pumping Iron. What? Hey, did I say that documentaries were allowed in this? Did I really? I I should you have gave omitted me, those. Damn it! You gave <sighs> me no guidelines for this, so I'm just listing my ten favorite Arnold films. You know, there there were a lot of uh, runners up. I really wanted to put some other Arnold films on the list. I, I love Kindergarten Cop. Uh, I love End of Days. Well, I like End of Days. Uh, I was going to say. His, I don't love End of Days. I like End of Days. I really like his performance in Maggie, although like he doesn't have any sweet one-liners or he doesn't, you know, blow anyone uh, up, blow anyone away with a with a uh, a rocket launcher or anything. No, but so it was tough for me to narrow this down. But uh, for me, Pumping Iron it it shows Arnold at an early point in his career when he was focused on the bodybuilding aspect. And obviously he is no actor, but he just exudes so much charisma and you can, you can see glimpses of the star that he'll become in this, in this documentary. I mean, some, some aspects of it were scripted, but for the most part, it's this, it's this very candid uh, look at bodybuilding. And of course it, it, it shows Arnold and, and Lou Ferrigno kind of, and other bodybuilders kind of training for the Mr. Universe title. And it's, it's, it's an interesting kind of look into Arnold's early, early career. I will correct you, Brian. They're actually training for the Mr. Olympia, but oh, excuse me. Sorry. It's okay. No, I, I actually did not include documentary styled films on my list. So I will say you have a great pick there. Um, it's one of my favorite things in the entire world. It is the reason why I got into fitness in general, though I am nowhere near right now where I was five years ago. Whenever I felt down about myself or I felt like I was in a slump with my fitness groove, I'd throw that in and instantly I'd be energized and ready to go to the gym and pump fucking iron. It is, I agree with you, it's definitely an early look at the charisma that Arnold will forever have and all of the things he's done since and show that he can act. I, I disagree with you when you say he can't act because there is acting in it. A lot of what he did to his competitors is act. He put on a show. He put on an act to kind of psych them out a lot so that he could win. And a lot of how he won was psyching them out. But great pick. It's a classic. If you've never seen Pumping Iron, even if you're not into fitness or bodybuilding or anything at all like that, this is a must watch. Are but, we doing uh, favorite favorite one liners? Oh, or? oh yeah, we are. That's right, Brian. Not only are we counting down our top ten Arnold flicks, but we're also including our favorite line spoken by Arnold from that picture. So what do you got, dude? Well, I'm not going to try to do this in Arnold's Arnold's accent, but um, I will read it out. It's as satisfying to me as uh, coming is, you know, as having sex with a woman and coming. So as you can believe how much I am in heaven, Yeah, I am like uh, getting the feeling of coming in a gym. I'm getting the feeling of coming at home. I'm getting the feeling of coming back... St- <laughs> I'm Dude. sorry. <laughs> I'm getting the feeling of coming backstage when I pump up, when I pose in front of 5,000 people. I get the same feeling. So I'm coming day and night. He's I mean, coming it's terrific. Lot, He's coming so a lot. So I, I am in heaven. That, 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 that's one of the best lines ever. It just goes to show how full of himself he was, but rightly so. He was the champion. And at the time, he was the one that won the most Mr. Olympia titles. For a long time until the 90s, I believe, when Ronnie Coleman came in and actually beat his record. But yeah, man, fantastic pick. I'm going to jump over to my number 10 and um, do it up. I may get some shit for this. I totally understand if people are going to hate on me for putting this 
as low on my list as it is, but I'm picking John Milius's Conan the Barbarian. This is the movie that, not directly after Pumping Iron, because let's not forget about Stay Hungry, um, which was the film that Arnold won a Golden Globe for Best New Actor for. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Arnold won a Golden Globe for Best New Actor. Um, this is the first movie that showed you that Arnold could carry a film. Um, he doesn't have as many lines to speak as he, does, he doesn't. He, he has hardly any lines. Barely. But you can sense in this film, you, you, you watch this movie and he's powerful in his presence with his eyes and his movements and you can just feel that this guy can carry a movie especially an action picture thank god for john milius one of the best directors and one of the actually i should say one of the best writers um of his time Uh, it sucks so bad we're we're missing him right now in the world of film because he had a stroke and he can't do anything like he used to do but he had this machismo that just went into everything he did. And he knew how to write for men and to make men love a movie. And this movie is so brutal, but it's also just like a great fantasy tale. Um, one of the best of its time. And it's beautifully shot. And I just love Arnold in it. He looks great in it. And it was a time where he got really lean for this. He wasn't as muscular as he was because they wanted him to be more athletic with the sword. And he did a lot in trading with the sword. And it is the first movie that put Arnold's name on the map as far as films go. It was a big hit. So number 10, Conan the Barbarian. And of course, my favorite line, Brian. To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and hear the lamentations of the women. Ah! It's a great line. It's a classic line. Conan the Barbarian and my number 10. Well, that's certainly a great pick. I love Conan the Barbarian. Um, the, the music in that is also really great, but it did not make my list. Oh, man, what? Conan you know, did not make your list. A movie about no. a barbarian. Arnold's shirtless almost the entire movie except for first, and he swings around a sword, and he cuts people up with the sword. He, 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 I, like, I he know, it's amazing. He's a snake. You like dragons. There's a giant snake. He battles with it, and he stabs it. Blood comes I know. out. It's amazing. It's amazing, I Dude. must say. But unfortunately, it did not make my list. Do you know what did make my list? What's your number nine, buddy? Number nine, Batman and Robin. What? Oh, my God. <laughs> See, now, I got a text earlier tonight from Nick that said if Batman and Robin wasn't my number one, that he would disown me as a co-host. But, okay, why is Batman and Robin at your number nine? <laughs> because this movie is so much damn fun. It is horrible. We all know this. No. It, well, you'd be you'd no. be surprised, but it, it is it is a horrible, horrible, rotten to the core film. But I have so much joy when I watch this movie. The joy just overflows from every pore of my body when I watch. Are you this coming movie. when you watch it? Are you coming I'm, every single time I'm you hear when ice I'm... <laughs> went to freeze chill? Are you every single time he says it? Oh, yeah. I mean, and Arnold in this movie, I mean, if Arnold was not in this movie, I would not enjoy it because he he's where the charisma comes from. I mean, George Clooney's a flat lines Batman. Chris O'Donnell's a wet blanket. But Arnold is really what makes this movie. And the, the lines they have him say are so unbelievably awful. But if it's Arnold saying the lines, then they become amazing. You know that if Nick was here right now, he'd be, if, if he still has, I know he has the Arnold freeze stuff still on the soundboard. He'd just be like clicking that button over and over and over again. He probably will when he edits oh, this, sure. but dude, God damn it. Batman and Robin. Ah, oh. what's your, <laughs> what, what, what is your favorite ice pun? And there's gotta be the best ice pun in the film. What's your favorite? Um, Well, there are so many to choose from, but my favorite is probably the most nonsensical, which is, what killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age. The Ice Age. Ah. It's it's amazing. Oh, my God. Uh, Man, Nick's going to kill me. He's going to kill me. We'll we'll get to my number one. We'll see what it is. But he he legit told me that, ladies and gentlemen, he said he'll disown me as a co-host. The Epic Film Guys will be no more if Batman and Robin is not my number one. So uh, we'll find out when we get there. But... Jumping on over. Great pick, Brian. Don't hate you for that one. My number nine is a movie you mentioned earlier that you omitted for some strange reason, but it is Ivan Reitman's Kindergarten Cop. Now, this movie is a huge part of my childhood uh, for the simple fact that this is a movie that my parents would let me own that Arnold is in. Uh, This is, you know, before they allowed me to own the Terminator on VHS and, um, 
I watched it over and over again because I loved Arnold. I looked up to Arnold. He was my favorite star. It, it's a charming little, you know, cop slash comedy. You know, Arnold's interacting with children. This comes after Twins, another great comedy that he had done with Ivan Reitman. And um, it shows that he has chops to do more than just be a guy holding a gun and blowing people away, which we all love seeing him do. But he has this charisma where he can work with women. He can work with young children and it works so well. Um, and I love this movie so much. It's not a movie. Like I pop in late at night after I've had a few drinks, like I'm going to watch fucking kindergarten cop. Yeah, bro. I want to <laughs> see that ferret tear crisp fucking neck out. Yeah. You know, but it, it's a good solid family picture. It's the first Arnold film that I showed my daughter and she really likes it. And I, I enjoy it. Like I said, I think it's when he started to, to stray from the action picture and, and do different stuff, more comedies, more family friendly stuff. He does a great job and I love it. So I better tell you my favorite line and I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure you know what it is, but we're going to play a wonderful game called who is your daddy and what does he do? And that's my favorite line from the film. Uh, it's not a tumor. I know that was that was the runner up, Ryan. That was the <laughs> runner up for best line. But I mean, after uh, there's going back five or six years, maybe seven or eight years, I used to be one of those guys that had fun with a soundboard myself, Nick. Ooh, big surprise. But I used to call. I'd come home from the bar and be drunk at like one in the morning, two in the morning. And I'd call like hotels or Denny's or any place that I knew it was still open that late. And I'd put the phone up to my computer speakers, my shitty computer speakers. And I would play the Arnold soundboard and always the hi, how are you? And then what, what, who is your daddy? And what does he do? And then people, they didn't, they didn't know it was Arnold. So they would just like keep talking. And I had a lot of fun pranking the shit out of people while I was drunk with the Arnold soundboard. So that line right there got me a lot of laughs, but moving on for you, Brian, what's your next film on your list, dude? Well, the next film on my list is a movie that I believe was ahead of its time. It is a uh, very fun, very clever satire of action movies, and it is The Last Action Hero. You're really going to do this to me, right? It's it's our number eight together at the same time. Oh, really? <laughs> How did this happen? All right, let's just talk about it. Let's just get it out of the way. This movie is just so fun. It throws so many references. It's 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 so meta. Uh, it's the kind of movie that I feel like people didn't appreciate the first time around because you have a great you know director like John McTiernan making this 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 film that is just so self aware and so hip and 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 savvy and funny. People just at the time just ignored it. Wasn't it a huge like box box office bomb? Like no it, one it, went to well, see it. It bombed, Brian. But the reason why it bombed is because it opened right up against Jurassic Park, dude, and that was like a yeah. juggernaut of yeah. the whole year. So I think that the they were foolhardy in the sense that even Arnold himself said, like if you read his book, which is a great book by the way, I definitely recommend reading it if you've not read his book. But they all were just like so sure of themselves because up to that point, Arnold had so many big hits in a row, Total Recall, Terminator 2, like they didn't question it. And then this came up against a dinosaur movie, the first of its kind, like it, a Spielberg film, and it bombed miserably, but since has become a cult film. And I, what I love about it, Brian, is it plays well to, to the cinephile, to the film lover, to a kid that loves movies because the film is about a young kid who hates reality and guess what he does, Brian? He goes to the movies to escape real life and enjoy action films. What kid at that point could not relate to that? That's what we were all doing. You know, so the film was written for kids that liked action films. It was still badass enough with enough awesome action and kills for the, the you know, the more adult action fan. And it had Arnold spitting out one liners left and right. So for me, I love the fact that it starts with a kid in real New York. It jumps into the film world and then it jumps back into a real world New York. It's so cool and so different. And I don't think another film has done anything like it since. I wholeheartedly agree. So both number eights, man, this is, this is great. So I got to ask, what was your favorite line from the film? No sequel for you. Okay. So you have a different line. So mine is it's a beautiful day and we're all killing drug dealers. Are there any in the house? I love that line. I just love that. <laughs> so great. It's so, it's great. so great, dude. <laughs> I'm the famous comedian, Arnold Braunschweig. That's another one, too. I apologize for my 
horrible Arnold impersonation. Yeah, um, mine's not great either. I, I used to be really good at it, and I, if I do it once or twice, I'm fine at it. But if I keep doing it, it gets worse and worse. But so moving on, both of us had Last Action Hero at our number A. Brian, what do you got at your number seven? Uh, my number seven is The Running Man. Oh my god! Are we seriously gonna do? <laughs> We should have. We. I usually don't go over our lists before we actually record, but dude, two we, in a row. I swear we didn't. We didn't. Two in a row. Is it going to be this way for the rest of? The, I feel like we're going to just be nailing it back and forth every it single. It might be. All right. All right. So the Running Man. Okay. Go ahead, Brian. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> another another brilliant satire on reality television. This was the original Hunger Games, you know, but this was definitely a more comedic and over the top dystopian future but it still has those action heavy pulse pounding violent sequences that we've all come to love from 80s schwarzenegger films yeah i i, I mean i love this movie uh recently we showed it at the alamo draft house for the 30th anniversary last year and uh it was it was an awesome experience and that was your first time seeing it yeah i've seen it once more since then uh just because one night i was you know itching for for some Schwarzenegger and then I w- rewatched The Running Man and I liked it just as much if not more than the first time. And I had recalled telling you it's a life-changing experience to watch The Running Man and as we left the theater uh, again seeing all these Schwarzenegger films in the theater like most of these I've seen in the theater either as a kid or as an adult some not watching that with you was a huge treat for me because I love being with someone at a theater that hasn't seen a film like The Running Man and they're seeing it for the first time on the big screen. It's just a very special tree and a very special event. And seeing how lit up you got from it, seeing you smile, laughing it, it's so fun. It's so awesome. And you would never get that kind of science fiction picture made now at all. Never. Now, this is actually somewhat roughly based on a Stephen King story, is it not? That's right, which I have not read, but I, I can't. I, I imagine it would be quite a bit different, considering how much they would have to alter the the character to fit Arnold. I know, I know right? But as far as I know, though, this is not one of the adaptations. That's right, Dan. I said it correct. Adaptations that Stephen King hates. I think that just because it was a, a somewhat of a hit, and that Arnold was in it, well. And because it's awesome. It is awesome. It's fucking badass. And what does King have to say? He directed Maximum Overdrive on like the biggest amount of coke in the entire world in the 80s. So he can shut his fucking mouth, even though I like that movie and you hate it because you're wrong. Um, Dude, B-side. Right. Maximum Overdrive. If we ever do another B-side again, we'll ever see if that ever we happens. We will. We'll it's see. Coming. But I love this movie. Great fun. Great action. I love Captain Freedom's workout. You know, I really want Jesse Ventura to give me Captain Freedom's workout because I actually don't see what the actual workout is other than dancing around in a leotard. I really want that workout so I can look like Jesse Ventura in the mid 80s because he looks Mm. great. But no, no. Again, there's no (laughs) gay here except for you. You're the one. But I mean, no, the lisp is not coming back. He's dead. He's passed on or he's gone to, you know, somewhere in Dead. San Francisco to live quietly. I don't know. But it's it has nothing to do with me. I'll tell you that much. Mm-hmm. Supposedly, Paula Abdul is credited as a choreographer on The Running Man. There is a lot of great dancing in it. I like the dancing. It's good. Very enjoyable science fiction film. Love the shit out of it. And my favorite line is probably your favorite line. But you can tell me what your favorite line is, Brian, and I'll tell you if it's the same. Actually, you, you go first. You go first. I live to see you eat that contract, but I hope you leave enough room for my fist because I'm going to ram it into your stomach and break your goddamn spine. Oh, see that that wasn't that's a brilliant line, but that's actually not my choice. Oh my god, we're not picking the same thing. What is your favorite line? What happened to Buzzsaw? He had to split. <laughs> It is a great one-liner. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, that, he's just the king of the one-liner. Tell me, is there anyone else in the entire world that does a one-liner better than Arnold? I don't think so. No, sir. I, no, I, sir. I doubt it. All right, Brian. I hope this is not the same pick again for our number six. What do you got, buddy? Number six is a film called Total Recall. Oh, my God. You put it this fucking low? Dude. I'm going to beat you with a... a, a a hammer or a bat dude the or... top five is okay well we'll we'll get to the top five but total recall 
this this movie rules. Paul Verhoeven movies from the eighties are are in a league of their own in terms of like nasty, violent, hilarious, creative. Like this movie is so gonzo, so bizarre. Again, if you look at movies today, nothing being made it, it was anything remotely close to the level of creativity and just sheer brilliance of the original Total Recall. They tried remaking it, you know, in, in that god-awful 2012 piece of crap, and it had none of just the sheer No invention. personality. It's so dull. No personality. It so it's so boring. And this film is, like I said, it's just in a league of its own. It is brilliant. I love it so much. And um, the, the, the idea that, like, what is reality? Because the whole movie is based on... on the, the concept of changing one's reality or living another reality and not really knowing what's real and what's not. It's not only a kick-ass action picture with tons of violence and, you know, three-tittied, you know, alien chicks. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got to have that, dude. But it's deep. It's like introspective and it makes you think about what you're watching. So, dude, Total Recall. I love it so much. I'm I'm going to beat you when I see you next. You're going to get a spanking. I'm going to put you <laughs> over my knee for putting that so fucking low, man. Dude, wait until we get to my uh, top five. Because... I know. It's it's tough. There's so many Arnold films. There's going to be a lot in my honorable mentions, like pretty much every other film that he made that's not my list, for the most part. I mean, except for The Last Stand and probably a couple others that we won't talk about. Um, the Last Stand wasn't even that bad. No, it's not that bad, but it's not top ten worthy. But Brian, what is your favorite line from Total Recall? My favorite line is when he shoots his wife in the goddamn head and says, consider that a divorce. You're doing pretty good with the impersonation. I like that. It's very good. Great fucking line, dude. Moving on, though. My number six. I had some trouble with this list. I won't lie. Like putting these films all up next to each other and you're stacking them up and you're looking at all the history and all the things that went into the getting these movies made, the directors involved. Ah, oh, they're all so good. But number six lies one of the best of the bunch, but it's going to not think a top five. It is James Cameron's True Lies. Love this movie so much. But when you put all these films next to each other, it's not quite a top five for me when I think about it. I mean, it, it is, but it's it's too hard to pick. I love this movie. Jamie Lee Curtis won a Golden Globe for this film because her performance is so great in it. But we're not talking about Jamie Lee Curtis this evening. Even though I want to talk about her in the new Halloween film, we're talking about Arnold. And I feel like this is one of the better Arnold flicks because of the simple fact that Arnold plays well off of his co-stars. By himself, he's good. When he's with someone great, he's even better, if not great himself. And you teamed him up with Tom Arnold. But he was so good in this movie and their banter back and forth. They're just so natural and they've since become friends. I love this picture and I feel like it doesn't get enough love. It's Cameron's one of Cameron's best films. I feel like definitely it's such a great action film. It's got great comedy and when it gets brutal, it gets brutal. I know you love this movie, Brian. Is it anywhere on your list? Well, it's my number five. Oh, OK. So you know what? <laughs> Why don't we just talk about it right now? Because we're close enough. The amount of joy that I feel while I watch this movie is unlike anything else. I just get such a rush of adrenaline and euphoria when I watch this movie. Not a movie that would be made today. It is very it can, probably considered very un-PC oh, by yeah. today's Most standards. Most definitely. Lots of, lots of misogyny and the depiction of the terrorists in the movie are, is probably Racist. not considered. Yeah, yeah. But a little. Who cares when the movie is so goddamn like kick ass and awesome? You and I watched this together uh, very recently, and there were multiple points in the movie where we literally gave the movie a standing ovation, and we it, we were just hanging out on the couch watching the movie, and we literally stood up and clapped, and laughed and cheered, and it's just that kind of movie where it just gets you so pumped up. Both Arnold and Jamie Lee Curtis play kind of multiple characters i mean not right, that's not they do not not literally but it's about hiding your true self from your spouse because arnold is a is a secret agent and, and he's hiding that from his wife and then jamie lee curtis's character she's kind of like this Re normal, i would say repressed kind of, yeah yeah housewife. yeah uh, housewife and there's a point in the movie where she has to become this like super sexy you know 
best scene ever <laughs> best scene ever and yes. like i said when i met her and she did the book signing she talks about it a lot she won the golden globe for it. it's so great to hear her talk about she it. deserves it she deserves she deserves the you know all of the academy awards ever for that performance and it's yeah it's so great that and the climax the climax is something that you think, okay, this is the end of the movie because it's a really big action set piece. No, actually, this is the end of the movie because it just keeps getting bigger. No, this is the end of the movie because it's just so explosive and it's just like it just gets you so amped up uh, and the action keeps escalating and escalating and escalating. And then just, you know, the most amazing payoff, you know, ever. And it culminates in the line that I picked for my favorite line of the movie You're fired. Yeah, fantastic! So brilliant! It's so great, and, and, and we can't we can't forget Bill Paxton's. No, amazing of course not, because because his ass shows up on our soundboard every single other week on the Epic Film Guys podcast. And if Nick was here, all he'd be doing is jamming that down our throats every two seconds. But I couldn't use a line from Bill Paxton because this is a top ten Arnold list. So that gets him wet. So one of my favorite lines is the movie. It's not. It's it's kind of long, but I love it in the movie when he says it, and it's so charismatic and it's so funny. First, I'm going to use you as a human shield. Then I'm going to kill this guard over here with the Patterson Trocar on the table. And then I was thinking about breaking your neck. And then he does all that shit. And then it's like the coolest thing ever. Then he escapes. This is the James Bond film for Arnold that never happened. And it's even better than a James Bond film, in my opinion. I love it so much. It's so fun. And, you know, while we're on this public platform and we're talking on a podcast, you know, we watched this. There's an HD version of this, ladies and gentlemen, that was on Amazon that you can rent. But yet there's no fucking Blu-ray for this movie. And Come James on, Cameron, Cameron has been dragging his feet. He's concerned about Avatar 8, 9, 10, whatever he's doing. And then he, you know, provided a shitty remastered 4k version of t2 let's just pray he doesn't do that with true lies just let other people handle it and let's give us our blu-ray of true lies because the hd the hd version exists like what are they fine. waiting it's for? not great but it looks fine it's, it's fine to rent if i could own a blu-ray of it i would definitely buy but it. it yeah it'd be it's much better than the crappy anamorphic you know dvd that they have out there that that is so awful to look at on an hd tv but at any rate it's all we got so you know what can you do? There it is, True Lies. So that was my number six and your number five. I'm jumping right ahead to my number five. And this movie is a movie that brings joy to my life. Anytime I watch it, I can be depressed. I can feel like I've gained too much weight. I could have had a horrible day at work. I could be too drunk. I could be too sober. I could feel like I need to get laid and my wife's not home. So this has got to be just good enough to do the job. I'm talking about Gross. Commando, motherfucker. One of the best Commando. action films ever made and one of Arnold's <laughs> best films ever made. Dude, seriously, he throws a fucking saw blade at a dude's head and it sticks in the dude's head and you get to see it. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's the coolest oh. shit ever. You get to see him go in a mall and he jumps off of a fucking third tier level off of a balloon that he jumps down and jumps on the top of an elevator. Now I know it's a stunt man, but it's still Arnold though. It's commando dude. I love this movie so much. It was the seventh highest grossing R rated movie of 1985 and the 25th highest grossing movie overall of that year. It was a big hit for Arnold. And this is a movie that set a standard, Brian. I don't think a lot of people realize like that before commando, like the super ultra violent, ultra cheesy, we consider it cheesy now, but back then it wasn't action picture where it has like the highest body count. Arms are getting chopped off heads with saw blades. People are getting blown away by bazookas and stuff. It wasn't the norm really. I mean, pictures were being made like that prior to that, but this was a major motion picture. Arnold was at the forefront. We got lots of great action. And then after this, you know, Rambo two followed suit and a bunch of other movies, death wish three. It became okay to have these cartoonish action spectacles where tons of people are getting blown away and getting stabbed to death and killed. And it was fun. And people went out to the theater to see it. And men took their dates to see it after a nice fancy dinner. And those bitches enjoyed the shit out of it. So Commando for me is at my number five. Is this showing anywhere up on your list, Brian? Well, you'll see, damn it. Oh, 
Okay, so we're not going to do the crossover talk there. Okay, I guess not. All right, <laughs> but so. I, you know, it'll definitely make an appearance. Where is is the question? But yeah, I mean, so, solid choice because uh, yeah, Commando, one of the best. It is, and it provides also an amazing score by the late great James Horner. Love that eighty score with the amazing drums. Those do 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 do. Do, 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 do. They're so emulated now in a lot of the synthwave music I listen to with like the Jamaican drum sound and everything. It's so awesome. Like I could watch this movie any day of the week. And my favorite line of the film. Hey, Sully, remember when I said I would kill you last? That's right, Matrix. You did. I lied. Ah, <laughs> as you see the dummy flying down the hill. <laughs> Love so it amazing. to death. It's one of the best things in cinematic history. But moving on to you, Brian, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. I think that in these next four films, we're probably going to be repeating ourselves a little bit. So what do you got at your number four? Well, considering this is one of the best action movies ever made, and it's only at my number four, I mean, that says a lot about Arnold's storied career. But my number four is Predator. Okay. So guess what? What? Have some enthusiasm when you say what. Have some more energy. <laughs> Come on. What? We're talking about Arnold. We're talking about the Arnold. We're both <sighs> we're both sitting at number four with Predator, baby. That's right. Oh man. I feel like some people are gonna give me some shit for this. I feel like they'll probably beat you to a pulp for it, but why is Predator at your number four? I gotta know. You talk about testosterone in your movies. This is one of the most testosterone-filled, adrenaline-pumping action movies ever. And it blends sci-fi and action so brilliantly. It has uh, one of the most interestingly designed and terrifying creatures in cinema history, which is the Predator. And uh, we will be seeing him again in 2018 very soon. This this movie is is just badass there's really no other way to describe it and you have a great cast of of characters a lot of different different kind of personalities all working together as a unit and all getting horrifically killed and fighting back against this this unstoppable predator and it is thrilling it is awesome and it has arnold's immortal line which i think i'll allow you to say because i have a different favorite line in predator okay see you already know what my line is without me even telling you but okay i'll say it my favorite <laughs> line is if it bleeds we can kill it yes perfect you knew you you know me so well Lloyd choss yeah i mean a1 late Lloyd, whatever we're calling you now whatever you are <laughs> damn it you taste so good though you son of a bitching young young man you what is your line what is the, your favorite line of the film well, it's not really a line. Well, I guess it's I guess it is a line, but I just love the moment when Arnold is like, "I'm here, kill me. I'm here, kill me. Come on, do it now. Kill me." It's so great. Like I love that moment when he's like waiting for the predator to get him and it's 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 again. You know what? You know there was some there was some urgency when he did that line. You know why, Brian? Because he was about to be married to his wife. During the filming of this this movie, he actually left oh, shooting I didn't to go that. get married. Yep. He went and got married, and then he came back to finish shooting. So, like, it's crazy to think that he was a workhorse. You, you look at this list that we're going through here, each one of us, like, these movies, he just kept churning them out. He was such a great businessman. He was such a great entity to what made all these films work, and he cared so much about them that he even sacrificed, like, his time leading up to his wedding to to do Predator. So, I mean, I, I love this movie. I've talked about it on other podcasts before. There's, there's, Nick hates it for some reason. All of a sudden he wants to start hating on this, but he hasn't fucking watched it in like 20 years. So I don't even know what he's talking about. He's calling, how do you watch he, Predator and not go that movie? He's calling it a piece awesome. of shit. I don't know why. I think he just loves being that contrarian. I don't know. I mean, it's for me, it's interesting because it came at a time where, okay, so we've had aliens, we had alien, we had, a ton of different action movies, but for me, like it's special because you have these guys, these really strong, beefy, like no one, no one can fucking 
touch me guys. You know, Jesse Ventura, among others, even Shane Black, who's Carl Weathers. Carl Weathers, of course, you know, action fucking star. They're in this vast jungle. And McTiernan makes a movie that's so claustrophobic in this huge open jungle. It's so crazy. And then we have, as you said, this iconic monster that's smarter than all these humans. And Arnold, uh, okay, if you have a problem with the fact that all it takes is some mud to hide yourself because it uses heat technology to view you, I mean, there's got to be a weakness somewhere. And um, it works well for the end fight. I love the shit out of this movie. It's up my number four. Get to four. the chopper. Ah, love this movie. <laughs> if you hate this movie, you suck at life. And Bye. I may suck at life for my next pick. Brian, what's your number three? Well, you already mentioned it. My number three is Commando. You have it even higher than I do? I feel like here's why. a piece of here's shit why. loser now. Well, no. Here's, here, here's why. Because Predator... Uh, I think is a better film than Commando. But the reason why I ranked Commando above it is because this is, for me, the definitive Arnold Schwarzenegger picture. If I were introducing someone to Arnold Schwarzenegger for the very first time, this movie, I I would show them this movie because it encapsulates everything about 80s action movies. It encapsulates everything about Arnold, his charisma, uh, his skill as an action star, his, his skill as a comedic star. I mean, this film to me, just encapsulates his whole career almost. And it's very much a meat and potatoes story. You know, there's not a whole lot to it, but it is one of the most awesome movies <laughs> to ever be I made. I think I'm going to put it in after we get done with this conversation. After we're done with this episode, I'm probably going to sit on my couch, have one extra beer before I go to bed and watch it just because we talk about it and it makes me excited to watch it again. And I've seen it exactly. like a thousand times. Exactly. I mean, you said it all, how awesomely violent it is, how 80s, you know, the the, the <laughs> whole <laughs> aesthetic and the score. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Those Jamaican so drums. I'm not gonna, <laughs> so I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but I will say my favorite line of the movie is, let off some steam, Bennett. If I have to say so, I'm allowing myself because, well, I can do whatever the fuck I want. My second favorite line in the film is, Cook says, this green beret is about to kick your ass. And then Matrix says, I ate green berets for breakfast. And right now, I'm very hungry. I'm- <laughs> <laughs> and they punches him through a wall. And there's like this couple fucking. And this chick's got the hugest tits in the world that you've ever seen. Oh. <laughs> and they're like drooping and bouncing all over the place. Because, well, oh my God. of course, it's an action film in the 80s. And you have to have that. Oh, sure. Amazing. Gotta love it. But my number three, moving along here. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Tintin, tin, tintin. Oh, man. Tin, tin. <laughs> oh, man. You can't go around just killing people. Why? Why? You just can't. I'm having, I'm putting Terminator 2 at my number three. Yes. Okay, there's a lot of reasons for this. I've got two more films ahead of this. Um, Terminator 2, make no mistake, is one of the best action films ever made. It is one of Arnold's best films ever made. Being at number three is not a disservice to it. Only a personal preference based on what I love. I'll watch this movie any day of the week. I feel like between the other Arnold movies that I've watched compared to this one, I've probably seen this one more. But it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a masterpiece. It's an action spectacle. It's a science fiction spectacle. It's James Cameron's best film. Yes, I said it. It's his best film. And I love it more than anything else in the world. My favorite line is hasta la vista, baby. And I'm going to make it clear and get it out of the way. It's T2. We've talked about it on the show before. We've done uh, a whole retrospective on T2. And you just saw it for the first time, Blois House, over the summer with the new 3D version. Is it on your list? If it is, let's talk about it now. Number two, Terminator 2 Judgment Day. All right, let's get it out of the way. So it's at your number two. That's got to be special, man. It it really is. Well, I've only seen the film one time, but it had such an impact on me because here's the thing. I don't know how I went my whole life without seeing Terminator 2. I just never, I just didn't. I just, I had never seen any of the Terminator films. I had seen Terminator 1 a few years ago for the first time. Never saw any of the sequels. Terminator 2 hit me so hard because it's like 
aliens to alien. You know, James Cameron basic. It's basically, for all intents and purposes, uh, you know, it has a lot of the same elements. So it's like you could almost call it like a, a remake or like a soft reboot, where it has a lot of the same plot elements as the original. But this film just took the original Terminator and kind of amped everything up to eleven. The action's bigger. The emotions are higher. I teared up multiple times during Terminator 2. It's much more emotional, definitely. It's it's so emotional. You, you, I never thought I'd be shedding tears for a killing machine robot, but there you go. I mean, it's it's so it's masterful filmmaking. It's James Cameron at the top of his game and it, you know, James Cameron's one of the greatest action directors ever. You know, there's no mistake about that. And and I I just think that this is uh, spectacle at its most uh, exhilarating. I just think this movie rules. Uh, Sarah Connor's the ultimate badass, and Arnold is just Ar- Arnold is just Arnold in this movie. He's so good in it. It is, yeah. It's, I mean, it's number two on my list. So there's one more that I prefer. But man, this movie it just rocked my world when I saw it. I'm glad that you felt that way, and I I remember you saying to me. There was this whole thing ever since I had met you where I kept trying to coax you into watching this at my place. Like every time we were sitting around, like maybe a few drinks, it's late. Like, what do you want to watch? And I'd go Terminator 2. And then we had caught wind that they were going to re-release it into theaters. Now, I had seen it for the first time in theaters as an adult at Alamo Draft House. Now, this is before you worked there. And they actually showed the the extended director's cut or whatever you want to call it, the extended cut with the added scenes of Kyle Reese and all that, which I enjoy, but you hadn't seen it. You said, I want to wait so I can see this in the theater. And I respected that decision because it is a film that should be seen in all of its greatness, all of its epicness in a theater. And we saw it in 3d, which I didn't mind. I talked about it on the show a little bit. Unfortunately, that version got botched on the ultra 4k Blu-ray, which I do not own. I canceled my pre-order. So thanks Cameron for saying that you oversaw a transfer that you actually didn't, or if you did, you don't give a fuck anymore. I don't know. Uh, very disappointing, but I'm glad that you as a first time viewer of the film got to see it in the theater, the way it was meant to be seen. So me too. I'm glad, I'm glad I waited as well. Although I would have liked to have seen it on a big, bright IMAX 3d screen, but that didn't pan out. No, uh, we saw it at they're, Starplex. They're, <laughs> well, they're, they're Starplex. No, it, it wasn't showing on an IMAX. 3D it wasn't, no, it wasn't screen anywhere. Not like so, very I mean, unlike when he did Titanic 3d, which did get that treatment and the same as a uh, Jurassic park 3d. They all got the IMAX treatment except for T2 did not. It did not, and so we saw it at kind of a kind of a crappy theater, and uh, the 3D presentation was was very dark. I would have liked to have seen it on a on a better format. Not that but... anyone gives a fuck about 3D because 3D is nothing. It means nothing. No, but here's the thing: I would have, I would have preferred a better presentation. That's all. But at any rate, it was still an amazing experience. I'll never forget watching Terminator 2 for the very first time. I want to see it again. I, I own it. I have the whole Terminator box set so i mean i one of these days i'll i'll, I'll watch it again because it's just extraordinary there's no questioning the impact of terminator 2 nothing has well, touched I, it since nothing came before it that was anything like it and it is still in my opinion cameron's best film and uh he can keep making avatar films all he wants and he, he can actually go in and produce future terminator films all he wants but he'll never be able to match the magic that happened with terminator 2 and it is what it is. It's history, and we're lucky to have it in film history. So moving along to my number two, you already mentioned it on your list earlier on, but it's Paul Verhoeven's Total Recall. That's right. I'm putting it at yeah. number two. There's a lot of great <laughs> reasons for this, though. Because of the simple fact, you said it yourself, we don't get science fiction like this anymore, where it has deep layers to it. There's brutal, over-the-top violence. We have that ultra-violence that Verhoeven brings to all of his action films that you just got to love. I mean, people get blown away. They get blown the fuck away. There's like a 100 squibs on one dude when he's getting blown away. And I remember the first time I showed you this film, I'm like the one that showed you like the best of the best Arnold. And I'm so proud of that, by the way, because I showed you this film at my place for the first time, and you love this as well. It's so great. I mean, it, it, the whole thing about is this reality, is this not? And Arnold, you know, being more of a charismatic leading man than a great 
thespian, so to speak. He actually pulls it off quite well. We've got young Sharon Stone here. We've got a lot of great actors in the mix here, and they have great sets in this. Dude, the production design is beautiful. It takes place on Mars. The makeup, and the makeup everything. Yeah, like, it's total package, and it wouldn't be what it is without Verhoeven behind the camera and really doing his thing and bringing his sensibilities to the film. I just, I love this movie so much. And if I'm laying on the couch late at night and I'm like, I, I need something to make myself feel better. Total recall, put it in. It's one of those films where you, you just, it resonates with you immediately and you feel comfortable from it. And it's just fantastic. I mean, there, there's no way around it. It's awesome. It's brutal. It's badass. It takes you to a different place, those fantastical elements. And the ending is so great. And, well, my favorite line from the film, Brian, is, Get your ass to Mars. Brilliant. I have a feeling. I have a feeling. Yep. Yep. You got me burning in the third degree here. (laughs) I think that our number one is the same, Brian. It is. What is this film? What is this masterpiece? The Terminator. That's right, dude. All right. I'm going to give this to you. Why is The Terminator your number one? Well, this movie is so dark and so gritty and stripped down. It is it is the simplest story using time travel as a clever catalyst to make Arnold the ultimate killing machine. His performance in this movie, and we've talked a lot about his performances in the other movies, about how funny and charismatic he is. I mean, in this movie, he is just a one-track mind killing machine. And he's he's really the perfect person to play this role. I mean, he's the, he's just, I mean, Arnold is great with the emotion, but in this, he's just emotionless. He's cold. He blows dudes away uh, without remorse, uh, without so much as a flinch on his face. It is chilling to watch him in this role. And he's terrifying, you know, it, it, Arnold, he's really playing the ultimate movie monster in a way he's unstoppable, you know, and, it gives me chills just thinking about it, honestly, thinking about his performance and and how great and how relatively low budget for, you know, for Very its time. Very low budget, extremely low budget. I mean, and, just think and, Cameron was coming off of doing stuff with Roger Corman after. This was his first... Piranha 2. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. So, so to watch this whole world be created with such a stripped down plot and production... Uh, it is is remarkable. The music. I know we're going to talk about the music to this we movie, are. but man. We are. I <laughs> might as well so just good. jump in because it's my number one as well. And this is the film, Brian, that literally got me into, you know, talk about those landmark films for me as a kid that really got me into film. You know, Tim Burton's Batman being one of the first and this being probably the second. My parents didn't know any better. And we were at a Saturday matinee store. Uh, I posted it to my Facebook about a year ago. There used to be these stores and malls that were called Saturday matinee. They would sell CDs, but mostly they sold like movies. At the time, it was all VHS. There was no DVD. DVD wasn't even thought of yet. And I bought this sick box set that had Terminator in VHS, like in a hard, thick shell case. And it came with a sick Arnold Terminator figure, which by the way, I still have in my collection. And my parents, they didn't even pay any attention to it. Like my dad knew I liked Arnold. They didn't even look at the back to see that it was R and they bought it for me. And I watched it over and over and over. And it was like the movie that kind of got me into, because this, make no mistake, this film is action, but it's also science fiction. And it's definitely straight up horror. A lot of people don't, really realized that this was during the slasher craze. And this film falls into that because it's a slasher. Arnold yeah. is Michael Myers, but like a million times more fucking powerful. He could destroy Jason. He could blow away any other slasher villain in seconds and just rip them apart because he is machine. He has no emotion. There's no human part of this creature. He's just machine. As you said so perfectly, he's a nonstop killing machine. You, you you just feel chills when you see him on screen. This is probably why it's at my number one. It's my favorite performance of his because he hits it so well. I feel like I I put this above T2 for many reasons, many of which you've already described, but 
It's gritty. It's dark. I love those 80s, you know, really cheap movies, but they use great backgrounds like the city of L.A. And they just do like these guerrilla styled scenes where they're just going on side streets and not paying for permits and stuff and just shooting what they can. And Brad Fidel's amazing score. We talk about synthwave a lot on the show. At least I do. It's one of my favorite styles of music. And I would never be into that if it wasn't for. Brad Fidel's score to the Terminator, and I listen to it all the time. It is, quote unquote, synthwave. It's be- before synthwave, and it's uh, electronically driven, synthesizer driven score, and it's so menacing, so scary, and so great. And Linda Hamilton, as an up and coming actress in this film, is so great. Michael Bean as Kyle Reese. I mean, it's the total package. I love this movie so much. There's nothing else like it. When this film was made, Nothing else prior to this felt anything like this. And then after this, we had a bunch of ripoffs. We had a bunch of copycats. And of course, we have this to thank for Terminator 2. I love this. It's it's definitely my favorite action film slash science fiction film of the 80s. I'm obsessed with this movie. What's your favorite line from the movie, Justin? I'll be back. I can't help it. I had to do it. He says it in so many movies, Brian. This is the one where it has the most impact because it was the first time. And it's one of the best scenes ever because he's wearing his ANSI Gargoyle 85 sunglasses, which I own a pair of. He says the line, he leaves, and then he drives the fucking car into the cop station. Just like that, that shot in slow mo of just him driving into the cop station and just destroying this cop's like dead. And then after that, we get one of the best scenes in Arnold film history of him going and just blowing these cops away. He's just unstoppable killing force. It's it. You can't even explain it with words. You can't explain it with words. It's that good. You know what my favorite line is? That son of a bitch took my pants. Fuck you, asshole. Hey, buddy, you just took my pants. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's one of the best lines ever. There's 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 talk of a dead cat or something, yes, in the apartment that or the hotel room that he rents or whatever, yes. And he's sitting on the bed with like no mattress. I love that. It's so great. When he goes through the different decisions of what words to pick, what line to choose, because he's a machine, then he chooses fuck you, asshole. It's one of those comedic lines. One of the only comedic lines I feel like in the entire film. Definitely, definitely. Are you surprised that Junior wasn't my number one? Well, you know, I was actually shocked shocked that Jingle All the Way wasn't your number one because we know that you <laughs> love that movie so much. Put that cookie down. No! It's like your favorite it's one, one of the ever. Most, it's one of the most crass, uh, juvenile celebrations Let's make it clear. You hate that movie. You hate that movie. You don't like Jingle All the Way. E- uh, even as a kid, I didn't like it. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're so wrong. But did you have any honorable mentions as we finish up the list uh, I mentioned them at the top. I'm good. There's a lot of Arnold films that I like. Yeah, I like a lot of them, if not all of them. I should I should have picked Conan. That should have made it on my list. But Batman and Robin just just beat it. Well, out. see, here's Sorry. the thing though: you'll be able to stay on the <laughs> podcast because you picked it, and I will be booted off because I didn't have it at my number one. Because Nick said if I didn't, well, we all know now. It, See you guys. Sorry. See you guys maybe someday. Maybe I'll I'll do a separate thing or something different. I'll be brought on as a guest. I don't know. But ladies nope. and gentlemen, thanks for listening. That was our top ten Arnold flicks. We had a lot of fun doing this list this week. Without Nick on, we just like to have a lot of fun. We get to be those bad little naughty kids in the bedroom that when their parents leave, they just fool around and have fun with their action figures and talk about Arnold and maybe drink their parents' booze when they're not looking. I don't know something like that. So thanks a lot. I would never do such a thing. Oh, Loisos, you're so much more dark and sinister than you lead on. But I'm a good, I'm I'm a good boy. You are certainly not Loy Choss, A1 Steak Sauce. But thanks a lot for listening, guys. We're going to take a little break here, and then we come back, we'll be giving away a little surprise. We're going to be giving away a digital code for a little special film. We're going to get nuts. We'll be right back. Galaxy. Yeah, stop up. <laughs> fucking god cock ass but anyway yes uh andromeda i create <laughs> i pre it <laughs> i'm sorry dude oh, i can't help it i slammed down take a, a power, power right before we started recording <laughs> take a minute take a minute we're welcoming him back to the <laughs> 
We're tripping over our words and we fucking can't talk. That's it. That's two sips of my homebrew and I'm just fucking <laughs> racked already. <laughs> Shit. Well, it, l l well, you, bl 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 fuck, man. I have not done it's this. It's been two weeks. Ever. It's okay. I can't talk it's been anymore. a couple weeks. God. It's been a couple weeks. We stuck. We we stalked. Fuck! I told you. I told you. The I'm seeing. Yes. Denzel actually took best actable. Best. Wow. I have that from that gift back. That, the, 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 I have that from that gift back. I got that gift. But no, I won't try to sing. That's just. Baby up. got back. Baby got back. Is that? Wait, is it, this have to do with, like a girl having? Justin, back, my anaconda don't want none unless you got buns. Got hun. buns, hun. Yeah. That's like the mm -hmm. one thing I remember from that song. Um, this flies by absolutely keep it going. Again, that's epicfilmguys.com. Dot clom. Jesus Christ. No, 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 no. Uh. Dot clom. Dot clit. Dot clit. Dot clit. And also, this is also important because a really... A ve and this is also important because this can... Darth Grumpy. Thumbs up for Deadpool's golden goal. Na, 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 na. Now, I am, of course, an AMC premiere member, and I get all sorts of free perks and shit, but... Yeah. But I am an ape. Now I am a. Now I am an AMC. <laughs> I lost it totally. I totally fucking lost it. Jesus fucking Christ. Idiot man. Baby legs. This is regular legs. <laughs> Baby legs, don't talk back to me. Now get out there, you two. There's a criminal to kill. I'm gonna get him because I'm I'm a detective too. That's the sound I make when I'm running fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, this shit is devolved in retardedness. Oh my god, you guys just did that be sewed, be sewed. But this week I decided, like I said, to change things up. I picked up this at the store. I picked up this. Oh fuck! It's their imperial solo. It, it's their imperial. Imperior, it's their imperior, Justin. Imperior, fuck me. It's their imperia, 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 imperia smoke. Imperious. <laughs> oh god. Yes, you do amazing. Yeah. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. No. Since then, he has watched another six. He's catched. He's catched. Jesus Christ. Ah. <sighs> He watched ten films in five days, and since then, since then, I've had one beer, one fucking beer. It's hobo beer, and that's why. Oh, motherfucker! All right. Creative. This is one film that he was so creative. Ah. Get he the so dick out of your ear. I am very busy, very busy, motherfucker. I swear to God, I'm going to make my this speak. What does that even mean? My misspeaking is going to be its own segment on this show someday. I swear to Christ. It will, I'm I sure. could pull all yeah. of them out and make like this whole story about them, probably. Because I think our fans just expect us to have a week really. Sound deflect. He's going to get sound more. Deflect? No, sound deflect. Jeez, I'm telling you, the misspeaking. This uh, son of a bitch. Unfortunately, I don't have a hydrometer, so I can't test the ABV. I can't test the ABVs. The IPVUs. He also was good enough to go ahead and share that for us over oval. Jesus, I'm telling you. The Oval Office. Speaking. <laughs> oval. God damn, Obama. And I'm at the bed bed bed. Go ahead. <laughs> and welcome back to the Epic Film Guys podcast. Thank you so much for sticking with us as we wrap up the show here. I am going to throw it over to you, Justin, because we have a special surprise for our listeners, so let's get nuts. Now you want to get nuts? Come on. Let's get nuts. We're going to get nuts. That's all right. We like to get nuts on the Epic Film Guys podcast and give stuff away. Most of the time, it's digital codes to movies that you all know and love. We're not going to give away shitty stuff. I promise you, you'll never hear that I'm going to give away a digital code to Transformers or to... Justice League or to Justin, I have a digital code for Ghost in the Shell that I'd like to give away. Um, you're booted off the podcast. You're fired. You're fucking <laughs> gone. Bye. Oh, bye. 
Bye, Ma. I'm sure. No. I'm sure someone listening out there wants a digital code for Ghost in the Shell. Right? Well, to be fair, if it's 4K, but I heard the transfer looks like shit anyway. So, you now what we're giving away this week, ladies and gentlemen, which was teased on the Epic Film Guys Facebook page, which reminds me, if you're not already following the Facebook page, please head on over to Facebook.com/slash Epic Film Guys and join in on the fun. While you like the page, make sure you join the Hopesters Dumpster, which is our main group our fan group because you're going to need to do that to win this digital code so we're giving away the brand new 4k best buy exclusive digital code to groundhog day we all know you guys love this movie it's a classic it's got bill murray reliving the same day over and over again and he even kills himself by throwing a toaster into the bathtub with himself and it's such a great comedy so heartwarming. Oh, my God. You just want to drink yourself to death while watching it. But all you have to do... <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Isn't it sound like the greatest family fun? I mean, I saw this movie opening weekend with my parents. I remember the shitty little theater. I saw it in Binghamton, which has since been torn down. But family, family fun at its greatest. But all you have to do, if you want to win the digital code, the 4K digital code to Groundhog Day, is be the first to comment on the post in the Hopesters Dumpster. Again, that's our main fan group on Facebook. If you don't like the Facebook page first, you have to go over there, like the page, and then ask to join the Hopesters Dumpster. Answer this question. What city was the film Groundhog Day shot in? I'll give you a hint. It was not Punxsutawney. Oh. I'll give you a hint this week. What city... Was the film Groundhog Day shot in? It was not Punxsutawney. Poor old mm. Phil himself, the real Punxsutawney Phil, was upset because he did not get to make an appearance in the film. Who knew? A groundhog could be upset over such a thing. But ladies and gentlemen, be the first one to comment. You'll be entered to win the digital code. And I promise you guys, in the near future, it won't just be a digital code. You guys will be getting full Blu-rays and more we love giving away stuff on the Epic Film Guys podcast. Nick loves giving away stuff. I mean, he's probably going to be giving me away. He may even give away Lois Haas's body for a whole weekend. I mean, for free. That's a, that sounds like a good deal to me. <laughs> well, it's been a while for you, buddy. You may get some action, you know? I don't know. Maybe someone will buy you some lasagna, a good drink, and maybe you'll be snowed in, and uh, you'll get to relive the same day over and over again. So maybe it'll be a pleasurable experience for you, but... You know, that's all we have for you guys on the Epic Film Guys podcast. We're going to make this short and sweet and not salty because Nick is not on the show and he is the salty portion of the show that we all know, we all love, and we miss him this week. So next week, we have a very special surprise for you guys. I'm not going to spoil it just yet, just in case Nick wants to be the one to throw it on out there on the social media platforms. But we will not be doing a regular episode next week's show. Be prepared for us to make our way back after that. And uh, we're glad you're listening. We appreciate you guys so much. We want to thank first our patrons that support us first and foremost, and all of our regular listeners that listen to the Epic Film Guys podcast. Without you guys, we would not be where we are. We would not do what we do. And I want to remind you, if you have not yet given us an iTunes review, we kind of forget about doing this at the end of the show every week but um i'm only two beers in which makes it actually possibility for me to remember head on over to itunes leave us a five star review or leave us any review if you think we suck if you think we're the worst movie podcast in the world leave us a review it's better than saying nothing we need your help we want you to get us up there in the movie podcast world so we can reach more awesome cinephiles like yourselves and also leave us a review on Facebook that also helps be a part of the epic film family and we'll love you for it so for myself for Loy Sauce we are the epic film guys and we will see you at the movies
Fix Network. You can check out more shows like it at oddfixnetwork.com. Um, 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 so, uh, brief, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, um, uh, uh, but, um, 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 and, um, so, um, um, and, uh, uh, um, 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 but, um, 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 uh, 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 um, 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 uh, uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, the, the, um, but, <coughs> you know, uh, uh, um, 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 uh, 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 and, uh, but, um, yes, what, what I'm, um, 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 uh, um, 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 uh, um, uh, from, uh, you know, and, um, you know, um, uh, well, um, again, I mean, this, uh, um, and, um, 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 uh, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, um, but, um, 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 uh, of the, of the, of the, of, it's so, uh, uh, dude, the running man, or, excuse me. Um, um, when Tom Arnold at this point was not really, uh, I mean, he had come off the whole Roseanne thing. Um, he was popular from that. Um, why is it at your number five? Well, um, again, uh, um, again, and, uh, you know, uh, the, the, um, um, again, uh, Arnold, Arnold playing, uh, uh, well, uh, it's kind of just about, um, um, uh, uh, um, and it's, um, uh, 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 um, 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 it, 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 well, um, uh, well, um, I, I prefer to predator but but this movie again uh but uh uh it is uh uh um you know uh um 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 and um but um ooh, i'm jumping right me. ahead oh what's okay uh um as a film lover and um between the other movies that i've watched for um 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 a re- uh, sequel or, or or not a sequel you could almost call it like a uh and and you know and uh and um the um um like again it's on that comfort list of if i'm laying at uh, it's one of those kids it's one of those movies from being a kid and, ugh, fuck them Jump it all over myself. I'm only two beers in. Not even full. Not even a full two beers. Damn it. Here's the thing. Um, There's a thing. There is a thing. I'm about to tell you the thing now. Um. Uh. Um. And. And. Uh, and uh, um. Um. And. Um. But they use great. Um. 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 I will. I. I mean. I. I. Uh. Um. 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 Uh. Um. um, um 